So this is this is AH1. This is the first uh, hover-capable AUV that NOC has has developed. Um, we started developing it right at the beginning of the of the pandemic, um, and it, it it grew from there. So it was um, an Innovate UK project originally. Um, so my name is Terry Wood. I'm a principal systems engineer at NOC, um, and I started. Um, working on this project about three years ago at the beginning of the, the pandemic and then Siobhan um, he joined to, to work on this project after the first phase went a couple of years ago started around the end of 2020 and um, only recently started on this project mainly like about less than a year about a year I started doing more work with this vehicle specifically that sounds about right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it's, uh, it's a hover capab capable vehicle, I say it's the first hover capable vehicle that, that NOC has developed. It's got a, a total of six thrusters, it's got three vertical thrusters, uh, two forward thrusters and one, one lateral thruster. Um, and compared with the traditional vehicle that NOC has developed, um, it's, it's, um, it's capable of standing still and, and going going vertically. So in terms of the, the scientific work that, that we want to do, um, it's brilliant uh, for surveying sort of vertical canyons. Um, that's from the point of view of NOC. Uh, we're, we're working um, with other partners with this project and their interest is to attach uh, visual odometry systems and camera systems to it um, so we can do surveys of monopiles and similar items in, in the North Sea. So for um, green energy projects to to look at subsea infrastructure, basically. So we we got the first phase of this finished um, about a about a year ago. Um, we did some testing in a in a local quarry uh, or quarry in Somerset, a quarry called Vobster, with one of our partners, and there we were we were doing the final testing of the vehicle with, within with that phase. Um, and testing that the, the camera could actually control the vehicle. So that was really phase one, um, and, and that was an Innovate UK project. Uh, we then moved on to, to working for a, a project with a defence partner where we were using a, a sonar system um, to control the vehicle. Um, that, from our point of view, that improved and enhanced the maturity of the vehicle quite significantly. We developed a, a front seat back seat interface and we tested that locally just out in the dock just out the back of NOC. Um, now we're working on another project where we have integrated or Shivan has integrated a, a new uh, IMU system into the vehicle which gives which is a much higher grade of, um, of navigation than we had on the vehicle previously gives us much better localization um, and we are we are in the in the process of just starting to test that and to enhance the backseat systems that we've developed in the, in the previous project. So within this, um, this project, we're working with a total of six other um, mainly commercial partners to move the system forward um, to give us even better um, localization, more accurate localization than we were able to do previously as a result of quite sophisticated sensors that be included on the vehicle. So this is a different type of vehicle compared to the others we have, which is the, if you kind of think of the Autosub Long Range and Autosub 5. And in that, it can use the same set of maneuvers, but within it, we are trying to do some of the hover capable maneuvers. So it can take advantage of basically what type of vehicle it is. And rather than going straight towards something, we can now do six degree of freedom control. So that's one of the major aims, I guess. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, and I think also that that's a useful facility for this vehicle in its own right. But but more generally, um, it, it's a useful experience for us to have, have developed. So there's, there's things that, are, from the other parallel developments, sort of things that are the features that are going back into this vehicle and features from this vehicle that are going back into the, into the other vehicles that we're that we're currently working on as well. So it's the the control the control system and the mission planning uh, tools are essentially identical between the vehicles. Um, but what we've had to do is we've had to uh, develop new behaviours um, to, to exploit the capabilities of the vehicle which are fed into the mission planning tool. Um, 
So just as with the other vehicles, you'll give it a set of, a set of waypoints. Um, you'll do that in, in the same way in, the, in this vehicle. So I'd have said that for the sake of argument, 90% of the, of the mission planning software is identical. There's 10% which, which is divergent from the previous, you know, from the, from the other vehicles. So the next major stage on this vehicle is it is going to be tested uh, offshore um, with the partners I mentioned previously. With, with, it's going to be tested offshore with um, six other partners next August. So that is probably the first time we will have tested it in a genuine offshore situation. Um, building up to that, we will be doing more testing in the dock. We'll be doing some freshwater testing as well. Um, we, might, we might be taking it on a cruise. That's still being, being sorted out. Uh, and we're starting to think about what we're calling AH2. So we're starting to think about, um, with the lessons learned from this vehicle, how we, can, how we can improve it, how we can make it more efficient, more effective, easier to work with.